became the first American journalist to be exiled from Russia. Well, that that took place in 2013. Um, and basically, I had gone to Ukraine before, of course, there was no war at that time. Uh, I went to Kiev to renew my visa. This is a standard bureaucratic procedure. I had all the necessary documents. And uh, uh, the, the rule is the same for everybody. You have to leave the country, get it renewed, and then come back in. I had an apartment in Moscow. I was accredited in Moscow. I was planning to live there and stay there. And uh, I was informed by a diplomat uh, in the Russian embassy uh, in Kiev that my presence on the territory of the Russian Federation was undesirable, that this had been the conclusion of the so-called competent organs. That's a euphemism for uh, the FSB, the Federal Security uh, Service, which is the successor a organization to the KGB. And uh, I was banned from entering the country, so I couldn't go back. I mean, all my things were there. In the end, uh, my son uh, went to Moscow and packed up my things and brought them back out. And that was it. Uh, the Moscow Times, which is an English-language paper in Moscow, uh, wrote, wrote an article about it. They said it wasn't surprising that I was expelled. It was surprising that it took so long. Really? Yeah. And... Um, in fact, I have a long, long record of confrontation with uh, the Russian authorities and then the Soviet authorities before them because I, I went to, to Russia for the first time in, as a correspondent in 1976. Uh, as the, at that point, the very, very young correspondent of the London Financial Times. And in 1979, there was an attempt to expel me which failed. It was, uh, it was based on the idea or based on the assumption that uh, neither the British embassy nor the American embassy, since I was an American working for a British publication, and in those years that was very unusual, uh, would defend me. Uh, but in fact, they both did. And they threatened to expel Russian journalists from both London and Washington. And those Russian journalists were, in fact, intelligence agents, and they didn't want to lose them. So uh, they allowed me to stay in, uh, in Moscow. And, th and uh, I was able to remain there for three more years to work on a book which eventually uh, you know, was published uh, and I had intended it to be about the Soviet totalitarian system, but because history kind of began to move very fast, it was ultimately about the the fall of the Soviet uh, totalitarian system. And uh, after that, I couldn't go back for uh, a number of years. I was blocked when I tried to to travel to the Soviet Union. But in the, la uh, in the last years of the Soviet Union, after the Gorbachev reforms had gone very, very far, I was finally allowed back in. I was the last American journalist to be allowed back in, and it turns out I was the first to be expelled in, in post-Soviet Russia. But between the time that I was allowed in and the time that I was expelled, uh, there were uh, 20, 23 years that I was going back and forth and writing about Russia. I wrote, wrote other books. What made, it, what made you interested in going over to Russia in the first place? And was there any suspicion from Russia that you could have been in U.S. intelligence? There's always that suspicion. Uh, they, but, but they have extremely... Uh, thorough ways of keeping track of Western journalists. For one thing, we lived in the Soviet times in buildings that were bugged and where there were video cameras and where there were guards outside the buildings and where everyone who came and went was registered and observed. Uh, you know, we didn't have mobile phones in those days, but the phones 
uh, were all tapped. The only way to have a private conversation was to go to a booth and put a two kopeck coin in, into a, a tin telephone and try to dial a number. In fact, it was uh, it was quite an effort actually to get the damn telephone even to work, let alone to get through to somebody. But if you called from your home, then everything was, of course, monitored. Uh, so they knew pretty well what correspondents were doing, who we were, with whom we were meeting. Uh, intelligence agents are really, although there's a lot of mythology about this, uh, their their principal job is to recruit sources, and uh, that means, for example, finding people who worked in the Russian or Soviet government who could provide. Uh, secret information. Everything I did was open and public, mm. and I didn't. I didn't make any such efforts to establish such contacts. The other. Oh, and the the other thing was that all of the drivers, secretaries, maids, and service personnel in the foreigners' buildings all worked for the uh, KGB at that time. So it was hard to conceal very much from them, and uh, and in fact. Uh, I had no interest in doing that. I, I thought that I wanted to make it clear that I was operating openly and, and according to the law mm-hmm. and that I had a, a legitimate right as a representative of the Western press uh, and the democratic world, in effect, uh, to gather truthful information to make it known. What sparked your interest to ri- originally go over there? And how old were well, you when you first went over there? Well, I, when I first went over there, I was a graduate student. Okay. I was a graduate student. It was actually in 1969. I'll tell you how old I was. So you, at that time, I was 21. Wow. Yeah. And I went there because I was a graduate student at Oxford University in, in England. And uh, I had always been interested in Russia. And then when I, I, uh, I, I went to study at Oxford, suddenly Russia was close i mean you could get on a train uh in in london and of course you had to get off the train to get on a ferry and then and then uh take the ferry to the hook of holland and pick up another train but nonetheless you could buy a ticket in london uh and take a train that would uh, eventually lead you to uh, to moscow and i didn't want to miss that opportunity i went there many times not many times but a number of times spend as much time in the Soviet Union as I could and just became fascinated with the place hmm. and of and with the language. The I, language. Yeah, the Russian language. Because I at uh, I went to a high school in Chicago on the south side of Chicago and uh, it was in the neighborhood of the University of Chicago and it was a crazy coincidence but uh, there was a woman there who taught Russian. And the high school students had the option of, uh, we, we had a choice. It was French, Spanish, German, Latin, or Russian. And I, uh, I asked my father at that time, I was, I was 13, I, I asked him, uh, what, what language do you think I should take? He said, yeah, I think you should take Russian. It might be, might be useful someday. I couldn't imagine how it could be useful because I knew even at that age that very few people were able to go to the Soviet Union, that to live there you had to be part of uh, a special diplomatic community. It never uh, crossed my mind at that time that I might one day be part of that community, but that's what happened. And uh, I also did something which I would actually advise any student to do which is I didn't quit. Once, uh, many, many of the people who took Russian gave up on it. It's a difficult language. Mm-hmm. Many of them decided, oh, heck, I'm not going to tr- struggle with this. I'll, I'll study Spanish. You know, in the case of people who had uh, a language requirement that they had to fulfill. But I, uh, after four years of high school Russian, during which I didn't learn very much, uh, I thought that, well, look, I still have a little bit of, of background, and why not build on it? So I, I, I took Russian when I went to the University of Chicago. 
because to graduate from uh, the University of Chicago in those days, you had to have at least one year of a foreign language. And then when I got to, to Oxford, I continued. And, fi- and then, if, needless to say, I got practice when I, when I traveled there. And I spent one summer at a, taking a special Russian course that was organized by the British Soviet Friendship Society. And I signed up for it. So little by the point is, little by little, I improved my knowledge of Russian. And so that when I went to Moscow, I had a base. And of course, I worked hard with a tutor and finally, finally got to the point that every journalist should get to where I could go out and talk to people in their own language and, uh, and kind of circulate as, as almost as if I were a Soviet citizen.